And now, please welcome President and CEO of Travel Portland, Jeff Miller, and Executive Director of Port of Portland, Curtis Robinhold, in discussion with Managing Director of Skift Advisory, Lisa Wire-Perilla. Hello, everyone. Jeff, Curtis, thanks for joining us at Global Forum this year. Great to be here. Great to be here. As Gloria just mentioned in her video, uh, Skift Advisory recently collaborated with STGC on a report focused on best practices in local sourcing. For the report, we looked at destinations all over the world and uh, looked at how they were using local sourcing to sort of maximize the benefits of tourism while minimizing any negative impact on the local environment and people. Um, Really, the goal of the report was to uncover great work and create a place where people could learn about it and replicate it in their own backyard. Um, and in our early research for this report, one of the projects that very quickly stood out to us was the new main terminal project at Portland's International Airport, PDX. So I am thrilled to have both Jeff and Curtis here today to talk a little bit about the project, which I believe opens to the public in May of next year. Is that right? Yes. That's the plan. So mark your calendars, May 2024. Um, but excited to talk to you a little bit about sort of what it means to the destination, what it means to uh, the local community, and to tourism overall. So uh, Curtis, to start out, I think, you know, when I think about Portland, and maybe some of you in, in the audience feel the same way, I think about sort of all things green and sustainable, right? You have this really great reputation for sustainability. But when I think about an airport, it's perhaps not the most sustainable thing that one can build. In fact, it might be the least sustainable structure a city could build. Um, so tell us a little bit about your unique approach to this renovation, and what were your goals when starting out? Yeah, great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, it has been quite a journey, honestly, and uh, we are looking at, at PDX both at the activity set but also the structure. And this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to around, the, around the structure. Really, we move about 20 million passengers a year through PDX, and we're rebuilding the entire central terminal. It's about a $2 billion project, and God willing, uh, next May we'll open the doors. Uh, we worked with our architects to think about what we could do to reflect the values of our community and to have an airport that you can walk into and know where you've arrived, that it would reflect not just values, but also scenery and materials mm -hmm. and the people who did the work. So that's really some of the photos you're seeing up here. The design that ZGF brought us was uh, essentially a, a wood-based structure, nine acres of roof uh, based out of wood. And the kind of feeling you get from a building that is unique and special, you think, in, in fact, just about the room we're in today, you can look out the window. This is a uniquely New York space. That means something. And we want to capture that for Oregon. Um, the, the way we did that is really focused first on what are those values, what's important to us, mm -hmm. and we outlined three primary areas. First, we wanted local sourcing, so uh, really thinking about where the wood would come from, who's going to do the work, where the steel work takes place, and so on. Second, equity, and are we sourcing equitably, or are just the sort of same old players winning as they have won in the past? Are there new especially minority-owned, women-owned businesses, tribal partners, are there new sources of wood that we could bring into the market? And lastly, is that wood traceable? Could you actually say where it came from with some certainty as opposed to the more traditional route of wood construction, which is lay down in a yard and you take it out of the yard, you have no idea where it was sourced. So big goals and uh, a pretty challenging project. Yeah, it's great. But what I love about those goals, and, and when we were looking at this project, one of the things that really stood out is that you know, the idea of local, equitable, traceable, these are all things that um, are sort of broadly relatable, right? That, that could be something that applies to a lot of different kinds of destinations and projects. Um, so switching gears just a little bit, um, some of you may be familiar with how the PDX airport is sort of known for this very quirky, cool carpeting. Um, I've seen it, I think, on everything from the pattern on things like leggings and backpacks and throw pillows. It's sort of ubiquitous in, in um, Portland. Um, but I think the real point I'm trying to make is that the airport has this long legacy of being loved by travelers and by locals. And, um, and that's a really unique 
element to an airport. It's not something we generally think of with affinity, you know. Um, but I, I wonder how you feel about this new renovation. Will it hold that same level of recognition with travelers? And, and how is it a symbol for tourism, your ambitions in tourism overall for the destination? You know, the airport is that place that you leave from or arrive to, and it's that moment when you know you are somewhere different. Mm -hmm. And when you see that, I was able to do a behind the scenes, and when you see this nine acre roof of wood sustainably harvested, you know you're in some place different. Uh, we also, throughout the airport, and the Port has done an amazing job of this, have all local vendors. So the local restaurants will have an airport restaurant. All of the new, the new vendors are local. Uh, a lot of BIPOC, a lot of women-owned businesses, and so there's a real focus on making sure that the community is represented in the place that you walk into when you get off that plane. So great. Really, I'm just so impressive, and I think, um, you know, the fact that it's reflected not to just the materials that are building it, but also to the, the vendors that are there is, is, you know, just bringing that full circle is so great. Um, so as mentioned at the top of the section of the, uh, session, a big theme of our report is local sourcing. So how do you bring materials from the nearby region and work with local stakeholders in the decision-making process? Curtis, why was it so important for you to source the materials and partners for this project locally? Yeah, Lisa, I think you captured it in that sort of quirky sense of Portland. And I do as a, you know, the, the home of Nike and Columbia Sportswear and Keen Footwear the apparel and footwear home of North America. I appreciate the sneaker game going out there today. <laughs> Lots of great uh, kicks going around. Uh, we are a quirky place, but also a place that's really unique. Uh, I do, I'm a, an airport nerd. I appreciated the session earlier today when we were able to uh, nerd out on, um, on airlines and, and aviation. But when I go to an airport, I think about, well, you know, what went into this and what went into this piece of work? And a lot of times you'll enter a brand new two or three or four billion dollar facility and say, this is gorgeous and I love how quickly I can get through, but I have no idea where I am. Uh, for us, it was really important to reflect Portland and Oregon, and I'd say more broadly the Pacific Northwest. So that came down to not just materials and who did the work, but also a story of the heritage of the Pacific Northwest, including um, the tribes who have been there for tens of thousands of years, much longer than our port presence. So, those challenges essentially re reflected themselves in how you source the wood and the work um, and how you think about those things differently. You can also do an old growth expedition in our forest. So we are all about the trees. Totally. So yeah, I love it that the, um, the airport project, while it hasn't even opened yet, it's already inspiring sort of new tourism experiences in, in the market. Um, are there other ways, Jeff, that you feel that that sort of same spirit is reflected? I know you've got a lot of different kind of local sourcing um, projects in the city. You know, so much, uh, Portland is a place of collaborators, and so you go to a restaurant and the pottery dishes are from a local vendor. The beer certainly is from a local vendor who used local hops or local grapes. Um, there's this sense of collaboration where one maker works with another maker and it's better than it was by itself. And so when you come into Portland, and I hear this a lot, people that have not been there before, they get to Portland, they, they'll get to the airport now, but they walk in like, now I get it. I've heard a lot about Portland, but I didn't quite understand what quirky meant. Now I understand, and it's very, very accessible. Right. No, it's true. That sort of local uh, authenticity really comes through down to the very last detail in, in the Portland experience. Um, Back to the, the airport project a little bit, um, I know one of the things that came out in many of the interviews I had with other partners involved with this project, um, you just have such a unique supply chain here, right? So you work with so many different partners from the architects at ZGF to Sustainable Northwest Wood. Uh, what was the value in doing this project collaboratively? Uh, you know, I mentioned that uh, in a normal project or a traditional project, the, the wood would be found in a yard and you'd buy it and it'd be delivered, you wouldn't understand where it came from. So to put together a, we call it forest to frame, from the forest to the structure you see in this photo, um, it, it really took a lot of collaboration with the landowners, with the mills, trucking companies, uh, the architects and designers and the folks doing the work to be able to figure out how to do that traceability. And it's, honestly, it's been a lot of work. I would say in some ways it took some radical collaboration that Jeff mentioned is really leaning into where's this coming from and what are the barriers? And the first answer on the phone would be, no, 
we don't do it that way. And sort of the repeating and going back and saying, we think there's a bigger opportunity here. Help us get to yes. And uh, it's been quite an adventure, honestly, and a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, another thing that I, I sort of heard often was that there was just because of this radical collaboration that you talk about, there were so many different conversations happening, ha happening at so many different levels. So the architects didn't necessarily always talk to the people that were harvesting the wood, right? So to be able to have all of these people involved in a conversation just brought this sense of, of pride and um, you know, passion for the project. And it'll be really exciting, I think, to see it, see it open. Um, Jeff, just the spirit of collaboration, other examples within uh, the destination that you that you yeah. see? One of the things we did with our economic development agency was uh, we created a My People's Market, which is to showcase BIPOC vendors so that they really have a platform to be seen in places that they wouldn't. And so I think there's a spirit there of Portland of all of this collaboration, but also finding ways to lift up. And one of the most important things our PR team does, and I mean, they've done an amazing job of getting stories, but they let those people tell their own stories. We don't tell them. So we, we bring the, the writer and that person talks about how they came up with their concept and where they came from and why this was so important to them. And that's, that's really special in Portland. So great. And, and I, you know, a lot of these things that we just mentioned are sort of intangibles, but another one of the things that was very important to us was to be able to find some real tangible success metrics that other destinations or partners that were looking to replicate work like this could use in sort of this evidence-based rationale for doing something in their own, in their own destination. Um, what were the success metrics that you looked at? Or how are you, will you gauge whether or not the project is meeting your goals for the airport? You know, we, we tried to have our metrics be driven by our values. What's important to us? Is it good for the people in the region? Is it good for the long-term sustainability of the land? Um, the, the big ones that I mentioned around local, uh, all of our wood is sourced within 300 miles of PDX. Uh, equitable, uh, all of the wood comes from uh, 13 small woodlot, family owned. One of them comes from Nature Conservancy land. Uh, four tribal nations have wood feeding the, the, the project. Uh, and then lastly, traceable, uh, we're able to say on that beautiful roof that was up a few minutes ago, 100% of the boards, we can tell you, uh, you have to be pretty nerdy to want to know, but exactly where each piece of wood came from. And that is really just setting a tracking system in place. In some ways, I think it, it creates a real opportunity to add value to wood built buildings to say, we know more about this. Uh, it, it may or may not come with certification, but you know where it came from. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah. One of the things I think you mentioned to me before was this idea that when you get off the plane, it'll be like walk, a walk in the woods, right? You'll be taking this sort of magical walk in the woods, which is definitely something I'd like to do when I get off the plane. <laughs> Um, super. Um, so I guess, you know, just last question for both of you. Um, when you think about when, another destination that's looking to take on a project like this in their own backyard, we only have a few seconds left here, but any advice that you'd give, give them? For Go look for those people doing something different. Find people that are in communities that aren't always represented, and you will find the gems of every destination, and every city can do that. We all have those people. Yeah, it's a great sum. I, I would double down on that. I also note um, we're really driven by the people, and so we're really hopeful that the people in the region have a sense of pride when it opens next, next May, and I hope, honestly, all of you come and see it. It's, it's pretty exciting and will be a lot of fun. I can't it's jaw-dropping. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, just one last moment here. Uh, if you're interested in getting the full report, it'll be out in the next month or so. Um, you can register here to sign up, and it will be delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.